uh, I started a job out here in January and it was like 30 degrees in Boston when I left. And I came out here and I walked in the building, like, I don't know, it was like 50 degrees or six. Everybody's wearing coats. And I'm saying, geez, what a bunch of wusses, right? You know, I wear coats all the time now. So <laughs> Yeah, I have, my, all my relatives are in Pennsylvania and they laughed at me when I said, that you know I had a winter coat because for football games and stuff like that it got really cold it got down into like the low 50s and they laughed right and then when they came to visit and we went down for a barbecue on the beach um in the summer and my aunt was freezing I said see goes right through you I think it's been kind of for us kind of a cool winter though for sure overall it hasn't been not a lot of hot spells. Let's put it that way. Limited. Thank goodness, that's what winter's supposed to be. Right. I should, I remember Christmases when I was a kid in Malibu, and it'd be like hot, dry Santa Ana, and I remember yeah. being a kid and thinking, "Gosh, it'd be great to see snow sometime." <laughs> yeah, and you'd get that pretty winter Christmas dress, and it was like you'd be sweating, <laughs> but I gotta wear it. <laughs> So we're still trying to fix that. Yeah, I haven't heard from. I don't know if Parker's on it. How are we? Who's kicking off the meeting? Am I supposed to do that? Yes, because you're the senior person There's on the council. One member pro of the public. Yeah. Okay. That we can let in, and if there's, let me open it an up. Issue. Uh, but he's the one. I I gave him the passcode, so he is was that a, Dean Gubani. Yes. Uh, Joel. Because Joel Schulman called me with the problem. And I, call, okay. I tried calling him back just now because Alex and I tested it. And he said that it's work, it should be working now. But I tried oh, okay. calling Joel, but he didn't answer. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to find the agenda here quickly. I had it up on my other... Comp- well, hang on. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, here we go. Uh, zone that's a racist. Oh, here we go. Got it. Just let me know when we're ready. Like we still have people in the waiting room. Yeah. Oh, there's Joel. Yeah, he's all good. We can start. We can start? What about the people in the waiting room? Let's let them in. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're good to go? Yep. doke. I'd like to call to order the Malibu City Council Environmental Sub. Sustainability Subcommittee special meeting here on Thursday, March 25th, starting at 10.03 a.m. Do I need to read the whole COVID thing? I think you're supposed to. Okay. This meeting is being held via teleconference in order to reduce the risk of spreading COVID-19 and pursuant to the governor's executive orders and the County of Los Angeles public health orders as well. Uh, you can view the, the meeting on malibucity.org forward slash video or malibucity.org forward slash virtual meeting. Um, to participate in the meal meeting, blah, you're encouraged to submit email correspondence to mlinden at malibucity.org before the meeting begins. To participate in the meeting, um, you have to do so through the Zoom app, Zoom application. You must first sign up to speak before the item you would like to speak on has been called. Then you must present in the Zoom conference to be recognized. Please visit malibucity.org forward slash virtual meeting and follow the directions for signing up to speak and to download the Zoom application as needed. Can we... Um, do we need to do roll call or not? Yes, we do. 
Everything is, is handled the same as your council meeting. It's not on the agenda. Um, can we have roll call, please? Mayor Pearson? Yes. Council Member Yearing? Here. You have a quorum. Great. Can we have a motion for approval of the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. Anyone want to second it? I will second it. Um, okay. Uh, we have a roll Ye call on that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Council Member Yearing? Yes. <laughs> Mayor Pearson? Yes. Motion carries. Can we have a report on the posting of the agenda? The agenda for this meeting was properly posted on March 19th, 2021, with the amended agenda posted on March 20th, 2021. Okay, great. Let's get down to new business. Our first item, and I always tend to ask this question, is item 3A, approval of minutes from a meeting neither one of us was at. And um, I always know the answer is we approve it anyhow, somehow, but I like to ask. So talk yes. Tell me, yes. Mary, about approving an agenda that neither one of us, I suspect, maybe Steve was, but. This we're, we're is, not. you can approve it. It's just, if you um, if you saw anything that you know to be blatantly incorrect, um, you could make those changes at this time. Otherwise, you can approve the minutes, regardless move, of whether I'll you move, attended. I'll move to approve the minutes. I trust Mary. And I read them and I will second. They seemed they seem to make sense. Thank you. Uh, Council member Yuring? Yes. Mayor Pearson? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, we are at item 3B, environmental programs update. And um, can we have a presentation, please? Yes, good morning, uh, Mayor Pearson. And good morning, council member Yuring, welcome. Uh, we have uh, before you the environmental programs update. update for the adopter work plan for fiscal year 2020, 2021. I have here with us, uh, Christine Shen. She is our environmental sustainability analyst. And I also have uh, Mark Johnson, our environmental coordinator. I will pass the presentation to them and then I will join you back at the end of the presentation. So enjoy it. Thank you. Yes, sir. One very quick question. And during the presentation, should we ask questions during the presentation or do you want us to hold them till the end? Which, what is your preference? We have a lot of information and I think for just for better rhythm and uh, let us go through the presentation and we can always go back to the slide. The right, thank you. I just want, right, do it right. Okay, go. The presentation will last about um, 35, 40 minutes and then we can, um, and then we can um, talk about it or any questions that you might have. Gotcha. All right, perfect. All right, good morning, Mayor Pearson and Council Member Yuring. My name is Christine Shen. I am the city's environmental sustainability analyst and I will be kind of guiding this presentation with you today. Uh, next slide, please. So the focus areas we'll be going over are energy, water conservation, pollution prevention, waste reduction, coastal and events and outreach. The presentation is divided into two sections. The first half will be what's been accomplished. And the second half is looking forward for those six focus areas. And as Yolanda said, we have a lot of slides to get through. So we will an answer all your questions at the end of the presentation. Next slide, please. Here are those six focus areas arranged by the associated fiscal year 2021 work plan items. Next slide. And the first focus area that we'll go over today is energy. You'll see that the work plan items relating to each focus area are listed below the title. So for energy, we will be reviewing the Clean Power Alliance and energy conservation efforts at the city. Next slide. So to first go over the slide format, you'll notice that some of the slides will have a council action and date listed at the bottom right corner. This is to provide history of council's direction on that item. With that, we'll begin with Clean Power Alliance. In 2017, Malibu joined CPA along with 30 other cities from LA and Ventura counties. CPA offers competitive rates for electricity with higher renewable content. And how it works is that CPA purchases clean power and SCE delivers it 
and sends us one bill for both CPA and SCE charges. In 2018, CPA service began in Malibu, and at that time, council approved the default tier of 50% renewable electricity for Malibu residents and businesses. The city's participation in CPA includes monthly board meetings where decisions are made for the service area service territory um, made by elected officials like yourself. As the staff board alternate, I review the meeting agenda packet, provide notes, and participate in any meetings if you are unable to attend. Next slide, please. So in October 2019, the council approved the selection of 100% green power as the default option for Malibu CPA customers and directed staff to work on an implementation plan. Next slide, please. To ensure early and effective notification, we worked with CPA to craft press release, early social media graphics and posts, and two custom design postcard notifications. One was sent before and one was sent after the default change went into effect in October, 2020. As a result of our early outreach, Malibu's overall participation in CPA is at 97%, with 96% of Malibu CPA customers receiving 100% green power. And committing to 100% renewable energy has been deemed the most impactful climate action that cities have taken in Southern California. And if customers don't want to have 100% green power, they can change their rates at any time. And one more thing to say about CPA before I move on to the next topic is that last month, SEE increased its delivery charges by 10 to 11% for all SE customers, which includes those that receive generation service from CPA. So as a result, all electricity customers saw an increase in their electricity bill unrelated to Malibu's participation in CPA. Next slide, please. Another item we are working on is dark sky implementation. In 2018, council approved the dark sky ordinance to preserve Malibu's night sky. And the phase of for enforcement approach the city has taken is to have gas stations come into compliance by 2019, commercial and recreation zones by 2020, and residential zones by 2021. We're working with code enforcement and began our outreach la efforts last year to help our commercial businesses come into compliance. And this included sending letters to our commercial property owners, as well as inviting them to two introductory presentations. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, these presentations were postponed, but staff continues to work on plan checks for Dark Sky and currently has three active plan checks under review for gas stations. Next slide, please. Another success relating to energy is the city's participation in the Westside Energy Partnership and Southern California Regional Energy Network. Through these two partnerships, the city receives no cost energy efficiency services, such as an energy audit of city hall and installation of energy efficient lighting at our parks. Additionally, during the energy crisis last summer and fall, staff provided outreach to encourage the community to conserve energy and successfully avoided power outages in Malibu. Next slide. Our next focus area is water. Next slide. Thank you. Since 2018, the city partnered with West Basin and LA County Water Works District 29 on an Irwin grant funded project called Malibu Smart. The goal of Malibu Smart is to save 28 million gallons of water per year through incentives for water efficient technology. The program also brought the following events to the city, a rainwater gray water workshop, turf replacement class, rain bale distribution and firescaping workshop. And we'll be highlighting a few of these events in the next slides. Next slide, please. This slide shows the incentives currently offered to Malibu residents. Staff was able to secure the highest lawn replacement rebate in the state at $5 per square foot, while most cities are receiving $3 per square foot. 
And this is thanks to the generosity of West Basin and LA County Waterworks District 29, each adding an additional $1 to the standard rebate. Next slide, please. After the Woolsey fire, the Malibu Smart Partners tailored our events so that our rebuild families and the community had landscaping resources for living in a high fire hazard area. Our first workshop was in September 2019 with over 120 attendees. And our second workshop was November 2019 with over 60 attendees. Each presentation was followed by a Q&A with the presenter, Doug Kent, and our council members. And both workshops received a lot of engagement from our residents during the Q&A sessions. Additionally, attendees also received free firescaping workbooks that they could take home after the, after the workshops. Next slide, please. Another event that is brought to us by Malibu Smart are the rain barrel giveaway events. In November, 2019, the city partnered with Malibu Boys and Girls Club and West Basin to give away over 150 rain barrels to Malibu residents. And we are now promoting West Basin's rain barrel home delivery program where residents can sign up for a free rain barrel to be safely dropped off at their home without contact. Next slide. Recognizing the importance of inspiring the leaders of future generations. In 2019, we worked closely with the city of Santa Monica and the school district to bring water conservation assemblies and booklets to fit Malibu's fifth grade students. Our first assembly was at Webster Elementary. And as you can see from the photo on the bottom right, there was no shortage of volunteers and participation from the students. And earlier this month, the city and West Basin gave virtual water conservation presentations to the fifth and fourth graders at the Sycamore School. The students received a free virtual tour of West Basin's water recycling facility, an electronic water conservation booklet, and five minute shower timers. And during the presentation, the students were extremely excited to share their creative water conservation tips with the class and the presenters. Next slide. The next focus area is pollution prevention, which includes a large number of our work plan items. Next slide. And we'll start with the locking dumpster bin lids. So to address the rodent population and decrease the use of rodenticides in Malibu, council directed staff to adopt an ordinance requiring locking lids on commercial solid waste bins at all times and conduct quarterly inspections for the first year of implementation. Next slide. Before the adoption, we emailed Malibu's restaurants to prepare them for the upcoming regulation. And after the adoption in spring of last year, we mailed over 200 letters to businesses and commercial property owners and began our quarterly inspections. Following that in the winter, we placed, winter, we placed newspaper ads and social media posts to remind folks to keep their dumpster lids locked and closed at all times and to sign up for locking lid service if they have not done so already. Next slide. ESD completed a total of 112 ins inspections since the ordinance was adopted last April. And we referred, to nine, we referred nine businesses to code enforcement. After that, we now have 100% compliance for locking lid service at Malibu's shopping centers and restaurants. And we continue to work with community members like Poison Free Malibu to investigate any complaints. I will now pass it on to Mark, who will be discussing our other ongoing pollution prevention efforts. Thank you, Christine. My name is Mark Johnson. I'm an environmental programs coordinator, and I will elaborate on some of the other compliance uh, programs that we have with the city. And I will start with our ban on the self-regenerative water systems in the Civic Center area. The reason behind this ban is that these salt water-based water softeners discharge a brine solution to the wastewater system. This, this, this brine solution can impact the ability of the wastewater treatment plant to treat the wastewater, as well as it can produce a recycled water that is undesirable for many plant species. 
council directed staff to bring an ordinance to ban these systems that are connected to the wastewater system, wastewater treatment facility by October 28th, 2020. Next slide, please. So staff followed up with notifying 113 businesses on August 20th, 2020. And then to enforce this ban, staff targeted food facilities. We targeted the food facilities because these businesses are, more, are most likely to have these devices installed to prevent the unsightly spotting on dishware and utensils. Staff used a combination of outreach, education, and enforcement that was carefully chosen as the restaurant industry has been significantly impacted by COVID-19. We've had a few local businesses close our operations. Staff has issued six notices to comply and we've issued three second notices and are working with the remaining three businesses to have these systems removed. Next slide, please. The Environmental Sustainability Department currently oversees the city's compliance with numerous other governmental agencies, each having their own permitting and reporting requirements. These agencies include the Los Angeles Regional Water Quality Control Board, the State Resources Water Quality Control Board, Los Angeles County Environmental Health Department, LA County Fire Department, and Cal Recycle. Staff works with a selected consultant for each project to review every report for accuracy, to make sure they meet the compliance objectives and are submitted on time. These reports are, submit, are submitted monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually, depending on the agency requirements. Besides the reporting requirements, our permit with the water board requires us to implement an inspection program. I spend approximately 90% of my time on the permitting requirements associated with the Los Angeles Regional Water Quality Control Board. And I will um, discuss the inspection requirements in a little bit more detail on the next slide. Next slide, please. So following the, sta the stay at home order and other cities leads, we sent a request to the water board to temporarily suspend our inspection activities. We were granted a temporary waiver of the commercial inspections, but were ordered to continue the inspections at construction sites as they were deemed an essential service. I have conducted over 263 con construction site inspections for this fiscal year to date. At these construction sites were intended or were required to enforce best management practices referred to as BMPs, which include operating procedures that are designed to reduce or eliminate the activities that can cause pollution. Construction sites are required to prevent the discharge of, of pollutants, which include sediment and are required to take measures to prevent sediment from leaving the site. So common violations that are found at these construction sites is the track out of sediment, discharging from washing activities, petroleum discharges from spills and leaking equipment, and trash. Due to COVID public health requirements and the unavailab unavailability of equipment rentals, I worked with project managers to find creative solutions that, that met both health and environmental regulations. This picture shows one of these solutions. Wastewater is collected in the drip pan and then poured in the portable toilet at the end of the day instead of it being allowed to discharge directly to the ground. The largest construction site program that I'm currently involved in is the La Paz development of over 15 acres. Besides having to enforce the standard BMPs at this location, this project is also part of our recycled water use program, our, the dewater groundwater and monitoring program, and the grease control program, all of which it, the environmental department is the lead agency. The positive development is currently permitted by the Los Angeles Control Board to discharge up to 400,000 gallons of treated groundwater per day. Next slide, please. Another large part of the inspection requirement is the illicit dish program. The city is required to investigate, document, and eliminate or permit all non-stormwater discharges within its jurisdiction. On January 23rd, 2020, we received a report from the Sheriff's Department 
of an RV owner at Las Tunas Beach discharging their holding tank contents into the ocean. Since, that time, since receiving that report, the city manager has directed staff to conduct daily site visits to Las Tunas Beach. Staff has worked with LA County Beaches and Harbors, Caltrans, and Los Angeles County Public Health Department to have the area cleaned of suspected human waste four times since 2020. We have also reported camping and light leaking vehicles at Las Tunas Beach to the Los Hills Sheriff Station for enforcement eight or more times. Then around October of last year, we started noticing that there are little to no RVs being present during our inspections after the uh, prohibition of camping overnight. And with the approval of my director, we reduced the inspections from daily to weekly site visits. Another thing with the illicit discharge program is you really never know what you're gonna get. You can get a, a complaint, go out there, find like maybe it's a broken irrigation line, and then by the next day it's fixed. Or you can get a complaint like we've have up in the Big Rock area where one of the residents alleges it's sewage. And I've been out there multiple times. I've dealt with the environmental health department. We both don't, both agree that it's not sewage, it's most likely. Uh, overwatering and irrigation. However, each time I get that complaint, I have to go out there and make a site visit, which can cause um, numerous site visits over there. Another one I have is a discharge at County Drain 622-17, which I know quite well that I've been going out there since I first got hired on with the city three years ago. So some of these complaints can be resolved quite easily. Others can take months or even years dragging on. We currently have um, enforcement orders on the um, property that's discharged into the drain 622-17. Another permit requirement that we have is that we have to document how uh, municipalities are gonna eliminate all um, pollution from their water conveyance systems. We meet this requirement through our enhanced watershed management program, which is referred to as a ELIP. Next slide, please. We partnered with the Los Angeles County Public Health, or Los Angeles County Public Works and the Los Angeles County Flood Control District to develop our EWIMP, which was approved by the Regional Board on April 19th, 2016. This item was presented to Council on the February 22nd, 2021 meeting, and we are currently working with the awarded consultant to make sure that this update gets submitted by the, by the June 2021 deadline. Next slide, please. I also currently oversee the Coordinated Integrated Monitoring Program, or SIMP, which we are assisted by Tetra Tech, who is our current consultant for the project. The next slide will show our sampling locations. Next slide, please. So 13 of our shoreline monitoring sites are monitoring three or more times per week. I will review these sampling results and any abnormal results are promptly investigated. I observed some um, abnormally high bacteria results at Surfrider Beach and then went out and did a survey of the area and found uh, a few homeless encampments that could have been contributing to this high level of bacteria that we saw in the sampling results. I worked with the Sheriff's Department and Fish and Game to have these encampments removed. Next slide, please. I also serve on the North Santa Monica Bay Watershed Area Steering Committee for the Safe Clean Water Program. The Safe Clean Water Program provides local dedicated funding to increase our local water supply, to improve water quality, and to protect public health. This program was created by the passage of Measure W on November 6, 2018, which authorized a 2.5 cents per square foot parcel tax on the impervious surface of private properties. The Safe Clean Water Program has two separate sources of funding, the regional program and the municipal program. 50% of the funds collected are available through the competitive regional program. 40% is, is distributed directly to municipalities and 10% is collected by the Los Angeles County Flood Control District to administer the program. Next slide, please. 
we receive approximately 380,000 each year from the municipal program that can only be used on projects or programs that provide a stormwater quality benefit. Each municipality is required to submit an annual plan describing how it'll be using the program funds for that year before it will re receive the funds for that year. The intent of this plan is to provide a description of projects, programs, or other activities that provide a stormwater benefit. The annual plan is a public document that is meant to provide an accounting of the collected funds from this parcel tax. Then six months after the end of the fiscal year, we have to document how these funds we spent meet the program objectives of the Safe Clean Water Program. We worked with the Administrative Services Department and the Public Works Department to prepare and submit the fund transfer agreement and annual plan for fiscal year 2021. And we're currently working on the annual plan for 21-22. I also provide legislative comment on behalf of the city on any new proposed or revised water quality regulations. In 2018, I provided a comment letter on the Santa Monica Bay Marine Debris TMDL reconsideration. With this letter, we are granted a three-year extension on the full implementation of this TMDL, which would have required the city to install trash cranes on all 280 catch basins in, in the city by March of 2020. So now our new deadline is March of 2023. And with that, I will turn it back over to Christine. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, next slide, please. So our next focused area is waste reduction. Next slide. Before the pandemic, we were working with restaurants to subscribe them to organic recycling service in accordance with AB 1826. We also began our zero waste city hall initiative and provided staff training on waste sorting and reusable plates to reduce the waste being created at City Hall. We were also working with Pepperdine students on the research and foundation of a food recovery pilot program in Malibu. And this will come into play with the state's latest waste reduction law. Next slide, please. During the pandemic, staff successfully worked to ensure that Malibu's grocery stores remained in compliance with our plastic bag ban, despite the nationwide paper bag shortage resulting from the pandemic. We also released educational materials on how to recycle right by not recycling our PPE and placing those in the trash and not bagging our recyclables since plastic bags tend to damage the equipment at the recycling facilities. Next slide. Our fifth focus area is coastal. Next slide. And our first coastal project is the Malibu Living Shoreline Project. In 2017, the Bay Foundation began coordinating with the city and LA County Department of Beaches and Harbor on a living shoreline project in Malibu. Later that year, council submitted a letter of support for this project to receive Coastal Conservancy grant funding. Next slide. The project will restore approximately three acres of dune habitat at Zuma Beach and Point Dune Beach. And the work includes the removal of non-native plant species such as ice plant, followed by the planting of native dune species to trap sand and naturally build dunes over time. The primary project goals are to increase the resiliency of the shoreline, protect against sea level rise and coastal storms, and increase the engagement of the community. Next slide. So this slide shows the Zuma Beach site before and after 40,000 pounds of invasive plant species were removed. And clearing the site took over two weeks since the Bay Foundation removed the invasive plants all by hand in accordance with the city's no pesticides policy. Next slide. At the Point Doom site, 10,000 pounds of invasive plant species were removed. And in addition to planting native seedlings, the Bay Foundation is testing the use of biomimicry stakes as a simple yet innovative way to naturally accumulate sand and build dunes. Next slide. So this, this slide shows the existing view of the two sites on the left 
and the proposed renderings on the right. Initial implementation wrapped up a few weeks ago and the Bay Foundation is now working to install interpretive, interpretive signage in the next few months. Uh, recently, the LA Times reached out to ESD staff about this exciting project, which will be featured in an article on the four living shoreline projects being piloted in LA County, including Malibu, Santa Monica, Dockweiler, and Manhattan Beach. Next slide. Next project is our coastal vulnerability assessment. The, this assessment will analyze Malibu's vulnerability and potential impacts of sea level rise in the short, mid and long term, which will help the city better understand its risks and proactively plan for sea level rise. And one of the deliverables will be an interactive GIS map with layers for different sea level rise projections, hazards, and the city's coastal resources, such as public safety facilities, development, and recreation. Next slide, please. A huge part of the project scope of work is community engagement, which is important for a community as engaged as Malibu's. The city selected ESA as our consultant to complete this assessment. And a large reason was because of their robust experience with community engagement. And we had planned to have two public engagement workshops last year. One would be to introduce the project to the community and the second would to be discuss the assessment results. Unfortunately, with COVID, both workshops were postponed, but we'll be discussing how engagement will move forward in the later slides. Next slide, please. And our last focus area are outreach and events. Next slide. Due to COVID-19, our large gathering events were postponed but this was an opportunity for the team to adapt. So we created the Virtual Environmental Center on our website. Through the Virtual Environmental Center, we, can, we promote free virtual events and activities such as gardening workshops and water education for adults and children alike. And we welcome everyone tuning in to check out the webpage and share any events that you'd like to see featured. Um, and to continue serving the community, ESD hosted its popular recycling events such as e-waste, household hazardous waste collection, uh, holiday tree recycling, and bulky item pickup with COVID-19 safe, COVID safety precautions. And despite the pandemic, we were able to collect over 15 tons of waste through our events this past fiscal year. Next slide, please. Last October, staff participated in Clean Malibu Day, and we spent the morning picking up trash in different neighborhoods in Malibu. Next slide. Okay. Now we're on to looking forward. These next slides are projects that are or will be in progress for the six focus areas. Next slide, please. In terms of energy, we are working with Clean Power Alliance on the Power Ready program, which offers a no cost energy resiliency project for all the 33 member jurisdictions of CPA. So the city is currently in the process of selecting the best city facility to receive a free battery storage system, which will increase our resiliency during emergencies like PSP events, wildfires and earthquakes. We are also working with SoCalREN on a comparative energy analysis, which will look at all the city's electricity accounts and provide us with energy efficiency recommendations. Next slide, please. And due to the popularity of the previous firescaping workshops, we're working with our partners to bring another firescaping workshop virtually this fall. Next slide. On to waste reduction. One of the more staff intensive programs next fiscal year will be complying with the state's waste reduction mandates. We are currently working with Cal Recycle to enroll all eligible commercial businesses to have organic service by October this year as required by AB 1826. And we're also working on implementing SB 1383, which is the state's most ambitious waste reduction mandate in the last 30 years. 
1383 aims to increase organic recycling and food recovery. To meet the mandate, we are currently working with the city's attorney attorney's office to draft an ordinance. We are developing a food recovery program with a nonprofit consulting group, and we're updating the city's procurement practices. Next slide. This slide is a snapshot of SB 1383's requirements for cities, which include contaminate, contamination minimization, education and outreach, procuring recycled organic waste, and procuring recycled paper. Um, given the complex scope of this regulation and how it will impact all departments in the city, we'll be bringing an overview of our SB 1383 approach to the subcommittee next month where these requirements will be reviewed more in depth. Next slide. On to the coastal vulnerability assessment. Given the sensitive nature of sea level rise, staff understands that comprehensive engagement will be vital, with, uh, vital to this project's success. And as mentioned before, the public workshops that we had planned for the coastal vulnerability assessment were postponed due to COVID-19 but we plan to adapt the project to have more virtual engagement opportunities this year, including a video introduction of the project, an online survey for community members to fill out, an interactive GIS web mapper, and a virtual workshop. Our contract with ESA, the consultant selected for this project, expires October of this year and will be extended if necessary. Next slide. On to outreach and events. For Earth Month in April, we've prepared regular tips to be posted on our, our social media accounts. And there will also be a joint household hazardous waste, e-waste, and document shred day at City Hall on April 17th. For all the in-person events, we will continue to follow safety precautions and we're asking residents to stay in their car with their masks on and windows up. Next slide, please. On to pollution prevention. Uh, we're going to continue to conduct quarterly inspections for Lockheed Dumpster compliance through the end of this fiscal year. And per council's direction, we'll bring a report back on our progress in the next fiscal year. And I will let Mark take on the next two slides. So moving forward, we're gonna to continue to seek funding in Proposition 1 and Measure W to secure funds for water quality improvement projects. One of the water quality improvement projects that we have in the queue right now is the Marie Canyon Green Street project. This is gonna be our first new city project that's gonna be funded in part by Safe Clean Water Funds. And we're hoping that this project will start construction at the beginning of next year. We also have this program that we've got to start doing, which is a rural drainage inlet survey. As I mentioned previously, we put a comment letter into the Santa Monica Bay Marine Debris TMDL consideration. One of the requests that we had on that was to classify catch basins as rural drainage inlets in certain areas so that we do not have to put the full capture devices on these drainage inlets. These drainage inlets are in some of like the more um, Undeveloped areas are up in some of the canyons where these drainage inlets were really designed just to kind of move water and debris such as rocks from one side of the road to the other. And if we put a rural, if we put full capture systems on that, that would probably clog up the drainage channel, potentially compromising the road. So that was one um, of the things that was also granted to us in that request letter is that the region board said that they'll be willing to work with the city um, to classify the catch basins as rural drainage inlets. As mentioned previously as well, so we're also going through the EA web update, which it has to be required, uh, submitted by June 30th, 2021. Another thing that is coming down the line is the Los Angeles Regional Water Quality Control Board is in the process of developing a region-wide MS4 permit. Once this permit is adopted, it's gonna require additional monitoring and reporting requirements for the city. Another thing that is due this year is the non-stormwater outfall monitoring program. 
This program was identified in our EWIM. And what it is, is we go out to the identified outfalls during dry weather and conduct surveys. If we find that there are no discharges during dry weather out of these outfalls, then it can be assumed that the city is not causing or contributing to any kind of water quality exceedances in dry weather for that area. Um, next slide, please. Another significant amount of staff time is involved in preparing, reviewing, and submitting the many compliance reports required by the different agencies. The TMDL for Malibu Creek, the bacteria TMDL for Malibu Creek requires that we submit monthly, re monthly reports at the end of the month to the regional board by the last day of each month. Quarterly reports are required by the Civic Center Wastewater Treatment Facility, which requires an analysis of the groundwater and surface water mount sampling results. Semi-annual reports are required to be submitted by June 15th of every year for both the MS4 permit and the Civic Center Wastewater Treatment Facility. Then we are also required to submit an annual 303 report for our Household Hazardous Waste Collection Program, which is due of, on October 1st of every year. And then again, staff will continue to review and comment on any new proposed or revised environmental regulations like we have done for the Santa Monica Bay Marine Debris TMDL reconsideration. Um, thank you, and I will pass it back to Christine. Thanks, Mark. Uh, next slide, please. So here again are those six focus areas with the associated work plan items that were adopted in the fiscal year 2021 work plan. With that, I will let Yolanda close us out. Yes, thank you so much, Christine and Mark. Uh, next slide, please. We prepared to you this uh, presentation, but I kind of want to give you an update. I do have only two staff members under this environmental group. And so you have an idea with this pie uh, chart work distribution with two staff members in this division. Uh, we're spending about 40% on mandated compliance, uh, such as uh, dumpster lids, ordinance, a coastal vulnerability, the self-regenerated water ban, and then the city regulations um, that are, as you heard from Mark, significant amount of technical uh, documents that need to submit to the different uh, agencies. 50% um, of the other time we, will sp we spend on grant management and the other 5% also, also is spent on work plan. Next slide, please. Due to the global pandemic and our, our budget was revised um, back in April, one, we used to have a third staff member and environmental coordinator that staff was uh, eliminated. Uh, that time council directed us to postpone a few of the work items on 2020, 2021, um, but we, and the group emphasized and continue moving with the dumpster lid ordinance, which was important for us to continue and force and do the inspections. Another item that we spent a lot of time was a solid waste uh, management enhancement and also the coastal vulnerability assessment, which it was done through a contract and it's about to expire in October, which we're planning to extend knowing that there's still a lot of information that needs to be shared with the public. Next slide, please. Under the postponed work plan, uh, again, the items that were postponed, uh, dark sky ordinance, uh, the second phase, we were getting ready to implement the commercial um, enforcement. And we, we were doing, uh, sending letter to the commercial uh, businesses and that got stopped. But what the efforts that we're doing right now for the dark skies is continuing the plan check for the gas stations. We have seven gas, sta gas stations that needed to be in compliant in 2019. And right now they're going through the process of uh, electrical plan check and getting the, per the necessary permits and for us to conduct the inspections necessary. Um, the other items was a climate adapt adaptation and resilience plan, um, Malibu Lagoon management plan, um, a requirement to have an energy action plan. So there's uh, several items on the work plan that 
um, were postponed. And I guess I bring it back to your attention as we are now getting ready for going back to you with a budget and going back to you to start thinking about what are your priorities for 2020, uh, 2021-2022. Um, that, that's the reason why I'm bringing this back. And, um, and you may want to add more items or you may want us to prioritize. I kind of just want to bring back to you guys that um, this slides give you possibly an insight of everything and that is done just by two staff members. Um, and those are the environmental operations activities and responsibilities just to ensure that the city complies with their local, the state and the regional requirements. Uh, Christine is, the, is leading the environmental program, which I'm very proud of her and the efforts that she's put in on. Uh, Mark, um, I, I cannot say, uh, I'm so proud of the, him becoming more and concentrated on the regulatory and environmental regulations that are so technical, but at the same time, he finds time to do the inspections and follow up through the compliance and enforcement. So um, you have staff that is dedicated, that is hardworking, that I am very proud to be part of, and I am just honored to be on their group. Um, the also important thing that I need to mention, these two staff members, Mark and uh, Christine, were given additional responsibilities besides everything that it was presented uh, through the um, COVID-19 world. While the city tried to find new ways of doing business and operations, one of the main priorities for from city council was the fire rebuilds, which you guys know that is taking a lot of time for us to to help out that community with the many rebuilt uh, um, requests that we're getting. The a new system was creating, uh, creating all electronic uh, requests through permits and that, it, uh, that impacted all the ge geological, geology um, re requests, the environmental health requests, uh, the building and safety permits. Um, so, Christine and Mark were adaptable and flexible enough, taking additional tasks, and um, they're spending two or three hours a day uh, helping out with the influx of all the requests that we're getting. And it's not only uh, we'll see fire rebuilds, the construction, which I am happy to say, hasn't stopped. We have received multiple requests for um, alterations, uh, commercial businesses now they're getting more, getting more tenant improvements because their people are getting, getting ready to reopen their business. And so we're seeing a lot of alterations. We also are receiving uh, requests for those homes that uh, were under the, had a CDP and now they're moving forward and everything else that we had under constructions. Our number has not dropped, it, they have increased. And so um, we are here for your direction and we are committed to, to, to provide to the community to put the time to give you a great result. And that's what I also wanna put uh, there for you um, when you are giving us direction for the work plan, not only tell me what is your priority, like, I, we are committed, you know, that I work weekends, I work nights, I am here for you and I want to continue dedicate. I am passionate for my job and I'm passionate and honored to serve the whole community. But I also understand that I, that maybe my staff don't have the weekends to work or the, at all the evenings. So I kind of just want to be also open and though they have worked hard for me, I just don't want to take advantage. And so that concludes our presentation and we are open for any questions you have. I know there's a lot of information and uh, the three of us will try to provide the best answer. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll go to public speakers here next. And I just, I think speak for, I hope everybody here that 
it's, it is a huge amount of things you're doing. It's, it's, it's really impressive with just the few of you and thank you so much. Very, yeah, really, really appreciative of this. And, uh, and uh, we will have lots to talk about here after the public speakers, but Steve has his hand up. So we'll go to Steve first here. I just want to say that was one hell of a presentation. I mean, that was impressive. Uh, so I thank you all very, very much. I've you know, I got a ton of questions that this, w w I mean, I get that, you know, I want to get more, learn more about some of the stuff Mark is doing because there's a lot of things there that I just was not aware of uh, that so Mark, I may somehow touch base with you sometime in the future just to get smarter if that's okay. So but Mike, let's go to the public speakers. Okay, uh, Mary, who do we, uh, who do we have signed up here? Hold on just a moment. Okay, go. over here. Um, Pamela Conley Ulick, I don't She's see here. her. Is she there? Okay, yeah, she's I see our her. first speaker. Okay. I'm here and I would like to give my time if possible to Dean. Dean, are you here? I Yeah, Dean's here and I'm fine with that. Uh, That's fine. I don't know who's next. Hold on just a second. Yeah, okay. we have people that are signed up more than once. Um, the next <laughs> is Kian or Kian. I apologize, I don't know how to say that. Kian. Kian Shulman. Okay. Yes. Hi, Kian. I can hear you. Okay, great. Well, good morning, Mayor Pearson and Council Member Uring and staff. Really good to see everyone, number one. Firstly, I want to congratulate the Environmental Department for such a vibrant presentation. It is so nice to see such a strong, organized department. Christine and Mark has done a wonderful job. It looks like though they could use some more help severely. Uh, Yolanda has done a tremendous job to organize this and to make it a real department. The crowning jewel for the department would be the establishment of the long awaited environmental commission. We would like to request help to move forward when the time is appropriate, this is a commission. Your years of analysis sitting on our commissions was an invaluable asset to the community. We know well the value and need of commissions. We have educated community members that can help review all of the environmental topics and prepare, prepare summaries. The environmental director, Yolan Bundy and her great team can guide the commission with her expertise and relieve some of the work efforts. An environmental commission represents Malibu's mission statement and a voice that the community members requested. This was brought forth last year with full city council support. However, it was delayed. The community and the city council will benefit tremendously from this added support, including local Malibu high school student participation. Alex Farasati, the Calabasas environmental director, says that they have no extra cost to support their environmental commission. We have been working with the Calabasas environmental commission members since 2013 on subjects of interest. Presently, we're working with one of their student representatives that we will assist to move forward a Lidlock ordinance for Calabasas. This Lidlock ordinance brings light to the basic issue of trash control as a major food supply for rodents and the use of pesticides. The city of Agora Hills is also looking into establishing uh, a lock ordinance. They establish a click fix app for student, for the citizens to report on delinquent dumpsters and other issues. Thank you for your continued support for the Lidlock Ordinance with strong enforcement. It is a critical component for a successful earth-friendly management policy. I would like to request lastly, uh, I know you're so busy, but this could be part of what the, t the environmental team can help you with. We would like to request some outreach material for the general population concerning the use of rodent poisons. We have continuing poisoning that's going on in our local communities including cats, dogs, owls, ravens, bobcats or bees still being poisoned. So um, please keep that in your back pocket. And again, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Keon. Okay, next is Dean Kubani. Hello everyone. Hi uh, Dean, I great to see you. Great to see you too. Um, my name is Dean Kubani. I am a uh, senior advisor for climate and sustainability to the Malibu Foundation. And I 
believe uh, you received written comments from me and I'd just like to take the time to um, kind of touch on some of the main points from those. Um, that was a fantastic presentation from uh, the environmental team at the city and it's, it's clear that uh, a very small group is doing a lot of great work on behalf of the environment in, in Malibu. Um, what uh, I wanted to point out is that, uh, as you're well aware, uh, Mayor Pearson, uh, in 2019, in September, you adopted an emergency declaration on uh, a climate emergency. And uh, since that time, um, that emergency has gotten more urgent. Um, and unfortunately, with the pandemic and uh, other issues, the, the city's had to trim its budget and hasn't been able to focus on climate. Um, what I'm here to, to recommend is that the city uh, prioritize this now. Um, we realize that, that um, climate change is an existential, existential threat, not only to the planet, but to our local area here. Um, we're already experiencing um, the many effects of climate change and those are only going to get worse. So this is a very urgent problem. Um, I noted in uh, what I wrote up uh, the work that uh, the Malibu Foundation is doing to address resiliency in the region. Um, we uh, worked very hard and we're very interested in the city moving ahead with its uh, climate adaptation and resiliency plan. And we know that with the budget restrictions that got shelved uh, for at least a year. So the Malibu Foundation has funded and is leading a collaborative Santa Monica Mountains resiliency plan right now. Uh, we're actually having our project advisory committee meeting right now as I speak. Um, and that is uh, basically addressing the entire Santa Monica Mountains um, wildfire urban interface region, the cities of Agura Hills, Westlake Village, Malibu, Hidden Hills, uh, Topanga, and also the Palisades. Um, we're really trying to do some of that work because we realize the urgency of it. And so what I'm here to recommend today is that uh, two things, one, uh, we anticipate completing our, uh, that plan uh, that has lots of input from stakeholders all over the region uh, by this summer. And we hope that the city of Malibu will prioritize um, looking at that and implementing the actions. Basically what that's going to lay out is the things that mountain communities need to do to improve resilience. And you realize all of the the impacts you had from the Woolsey fire and the difficulties and the problems. Um, this is laying out how to minimize that type of stuff in the future going forward. Um, secondly, uh, we would recommend very strongly that you take to the full council a, uh, an item on climate change so that your city council can, uh, number one, adopt a very strong uh, aggressive target for reducing greenhouse gas emissions and then put in motion a uh, development of a, a climate action plan to meet those goals. Um, I have a lot of experience as the previous chief sustainability officer for the city of Santa Monica. I've done a lot of work on climate and would be happy to come and, and speak to your council about that, about the impacts and what that might entail. And the Malibu Foundation would uh, be very happy to partner with the city to help identify funding. Mr. Kabani, your time is up. Okay, thank uh, I'm you. Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let Dean finish if that's okay. Oh, we we don't course. have a lot of speakers, so of thank course. you. Thanks so much. Um, so uh, I guess the last thing I wanted to say is the Malibu Foundation would be very interested to, to participate and partner with the city of Malibu to help identify funding and help make this happen. Uh, again, because this is such an urgent uh, threat, it's not something that can wait one or two or three years for you to get a plan together. We really need to be identifying ways to bring Malibu's emission down to uh, carbon neutrality levels very quickly uh, and build up the resilience in this area. One last thing I wanted to note was we are speaking with uh, the Las Virgenes Malibu Council of Governments 
about four of the five cities in that group do not have climate action plans. And we're, we're talking to them about trying, seeing if that group can help the member cities uh, maybe produce uh, one plan for all of the four cities that don't have them to help reduce the cost. So uh, that, that could be a, a speaking point with your council. Um, so basically we're here trying to look for solutions and to provide our uh, assistance. Thanks very much for the extra time too. Yeah, thank you very much for that uh, input, Dean. Uh, do we have more public speakers? The only other one I had was Candace Bond McKeever, but I don't see her in the I don't participants either. list. I don't either. Then I see that... Rebecca Nelson was just, she's, I'm not sure. No, who. she's staff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's the last of your public speakers that were signed up. Okay, excellent. Thank you, public speakers. And so we're back here at our subcommittee. Um, Steve, why don't you head off with your questions? I see Pamela has a question and or her hand up or she's waving. I'm not sure which. Um, uh, Pamela, go first and then I'll... I... Yeah, go, go ahead, Pamela. I, I just want to thank you guys so much. Um, one of the questions I have, because I my eight years working on the city council is to know how to help you like partner with the foundation who can help fund the plan that's universal for all of the sister cities. And I'm hoping that you could put Dean to do this presentation on your next coming meeting. So that way you can ask questions, you can learn about what the other cities are doing. It costs you nothing. This, uh, we can help you implement it. You can take it back to the city council. But what we'd like to do on the foundation, and I just recently joined, is to help really get this to an action item without having to use city resources and time. And I know um, you guys are so dedicated, both of you, to the environment. And um, we'd like to help you champion this cause to unite the community because it's something I think that can unite us all and it's so needed for future generations. So that's my, my call for you. And my question is, can you allow this proposal to come back, uh, put it on as an agenda item? So Dean can go through the entire presentation and you can ask questions. Thank, thank you, Pamela. And, and full disclosure, Dean and I worked together, um, God, time is gone, last year on bringing a climate um, plan forward and ran into all the issues that he described trying to get there. And also I am part of the group on the uh, Santa Monica area plan. And so, sorry, I couldn't make the meeting because we're at this meeting today. And uh, so, yes, that's one of the reasons we're here to try and figure all of this out. And with that said, I will uh, turn it over to Steve though for his questions and statements. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I've, I got a page full of stuff that I learned going through this thing, and I don't want to cover all those things. We'll be here forever. Uh, but I, I, subsequent to this, I may, if possible, maybe give you guys a call and sort of, if I got something I really don't understand, maybe you can help me through that. I want to just quickly touch base, the dark sky program, uh, going after the gas stations. What is stopping these gas stations from getting being compliant? I mean, this should be a simple, they're the biggest offenders uh, yeah, and we're, I think we're having trouble getting them to play the game. Uh, so far, only out of the seven, we have received applications for um, the bill. Well, let me just pause. The planning department has received applications for five of them. Code enforcement is trying to get the other two to submit to planning. So there's two step review. They go through the planning department, they get an approval. And as soon as they get the planning approval, they will go in through building and safety. There's four that has passed the, uh, the planning approval and those are the ones that we are concentrated on expediting the review, getting them a permit. And honestly, I don't have an answer for you on why they haven't submit. Um, like you mentioned before, this um, has been something that needed to be done in October of 2019. Um, I know court enforcement is trying to be diligent or uh, continue having the conversations with them for them to submit. 
Um, but that's all I have for you. Okay. Yeah, we'll chase that down. Uh, again, I got a lot of detailed stuff here. You know, <laughs> you were going through the water thing. We were trying to save so many gallons of water. We, we had a target what we were trying to achieve. Did we get there? Uh, uh, we are about 94% to our water savings goal. Yeah, I mean, there's some good stuff going on here that I, I mean, is an resident I didn't know about, right? I mean, so it's the old Chicago, tell them, tell them early, tell them, tell them, and keep telling them because there's stuff here that I think people who are concerned about the environment, and I do think a large percentage of Malibu residents are, would love to know about this stuff, that we are making progress in some of these areas. Uh, I'm, I'm going to skip you, you. I would like to just go back to, to Dean's uh, presentation. My suggestion would be that because I hear what he's saying and I don't disagree with the process that says, you know, the more we can do to help preserve the environment and deal with climate change, the better off we are. I can't tell you right now exactly all the steps he is proposing. Uh, and, and my suggestion might be, as opposed to going to the city council, let him come back to this committee. Right, do a presentation to us so we can understand what we've got, so that when we get to the city council table uh, with that stuff, we can maybe provide some insights that say, okay, this makes sense. This may be something we want to skip for right now, but some some way to make sure that if, if we're going to work with them, that we're able to incorporate the plan that they're coming up with inside what the city is going to be able to do. That's just a suggestion. That's it, Mike. I'll turn it back. I, I still got a bunch of stuff, and I'll figure out how to get those answered down the road. Uh, <laughs> member, you're in, uh, we can meet with you um, at any time that you are available, and then we'll make uh, Christine, Mark, and myself available, and that we can go in detail. And I, we, we will also send you a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. We wanted to put it also on our environmental uh, webpage so the community has it. And uh, we are available. If you want to meet next week, just send me an email. Well, send me an email. Yeah, you, you guys got plenty of stuff to do, so I don't want to put more stuff on your plate. So let me go back with my questions, sort of make sure I've got the ones that I think are the most important, maybe get those to you. So I'm not, look, you, you know, there's no doubt you're doing a lot of work and I don't want to do anything to slow your programs down. So I will, I will try and be smart in what I ask and, and minimize the time I take from anybody. But thank you very much, Yolanda. I appreciate that. Awesome. Mikey? Go ahead. Thanks, Steve. So uh, I would say I want to start with two things based on, on what Steve's comments were. Um, I think it's a great idea that we maybe plan um, a media outreach from some of the amazing things you're doing. Sit down with Matt at some point and figure some sort of regular rollout of information people, you know, that even if they know they should hear again and know where we're at. And that, that would be something great that Matt could do. That'd be feel good for the community, educational for the community. And I think that's a great idea that Steve brought up. Um, and I also say uh, with Dean here and Pamela here, um, Steve, maybe you, it, I think it'd be great. I think I'm the only city council member that's on the Santa Monica Mountains Resiliency uh, Group plan. Um, I can't remember the last initial of their name at the moment, but um, it'd be great to have you join that. And uh, it's, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, tell me how to do that. I'd love to get in, but you know. Okay, uh, I can help you that, or certainly Dean can. No problem. Um, there, uh, I think there's been three meetings I know of. I've missed two of them, and because we're missing one of them right now, <laughs> that's just the way it goes. But uh, I've known Dean quite a while. He's a, a a really really good guy, and it's been was great working with him when we were working together. And he's a good mountain biker too. And uh, so yeah, <laughs> I like Dean a lot. Um, so. But if we do that, Mikey, will that help us mm -hmm. understand what, what the Malibu Foundation is trying to do and how, if any, of that stuff we can incorporate into our plan? Or do we, is that, is that what we're, that will accomplish for us? I've, I've, I, I, I got lost in your question. I think the answer is yes, but I, I got lost somewhere in the right. middle. The question, okay, this, this organization, the group you just asked me to join, and I'm more than happy to do that. My, my larger ish question was, you know, Malibu Foundation is working on a plan with all the rest of these cities. And I just, and I don't know what all that plan comprises. I mean, and 
it's it seems to me that based upon the work that we're doing with the amount of staff we have, we're going to have to be smart. And if we're going to lay more stuff on people, we got to make sure that it's got a huge benefit. You know, so I'm just trying to figure out. I would like to work with the foundation. I think they're smart. I think they got good stuff. But I'd like to get a little smarter on how we do that before we move that into a city council presentation. I, I just, totally uh, get it. Or else, yeah, totally get it. So. I think Dean's the guy for you to connect with to go over that part of it. You know, looking at the list, yeah, there's there's people from LA County that are part of this. There's uh, uh, Henry Stern's office is part of it. Um, I see that Craig Hill is one of the people that's on it. Um, Jonathan Parfrey, who's very knowledgeable, is part of it. I mean, there's a lot of people, so it's a big group effort so but i think dean would be the perfect person to connect you with so, okay so i you know nope, the city doesn't have a problem if i start to connect with dean go through whatever details he's got and maybe use that as we move forward as sort of a foundation to, to suggest stuff for the city yeah, it's, so, it's not a city okay, project at do, this point yeah, yeah, it's an awesome. I'll, get it, I'll get a hold of dean and get that done okay so i, I kind of look at, first once again amazing presentation i kind of look at where we're at here we know that there's more to do citywide than we are able to do right now. And we know that that's never more true than right where we're at. So when I look at, when I look citywide and, and it so happens, Steve and I are on the ANF committee. So interesting parallel there, probably very, very helpful at this point. Um, I kind of look at where we're at right now as, um, Part of what we're going to get at our ANF meeting on the budget is all the city projects, no matter what they're about, that have been approved and aren't funded. And I keep using the number 25. Last I saw it, it was like 20 to 25. It's a lot of things. I think probably some will get rid of. I think probably some will push forward. Some will be stuck there. I mean, it's, it's overwhelming. Um, within that, we have our environmental agenda, which is, I think, incredibly important to every single person here. And I think what would be helpful as a next step in my mind would be to understand the budget and staff, and I know it's all estimates sometimes, estimates on budget and staff for some of these projects we're trying to get to. Um, I know that in our financial report, we'll see the budget of what's being spent already. And I, I look forward to seeing that, to be honest, and getting a little more in depth with it. But here we are, we're trying to do more. <laughs> so it, how we got to figure that. It involves people and money, outside consultants or our staff. Um, so I think that'd be a really helpful step uh, for me, and I suspect Steve as well, um, to sort of understand how all the parts move around and what we can do. Um, don't you typically get that in the Administrative Finance Committee? I mean, don't, doesn't it come back with something that says, here's the project and here's an estimated cost? Or is that something we've got to ask for? That's, that, that's not a standard. Well, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff here. So I was just, yeah, maybe, um, I don't know. I'm I don't know. A and F like you. <laughs> so um, I think understanding uh sort of a general thought on you know how much you know yeah no, no I, I, I agree with you. And, and financial cost on yeah. some of these projects that we're trying to get to would be really really helpful um and we did a small version of that with the the uh the uh dumpster lid ordinance we knew what it costs and okay we could be we could get that one going um we can prepare better for what you need um are you looking at the postponed work plan item? So are you looking to add more things or more ideas? Um, um, that's a great question. <laughs> if I, I think there's enough that's on that plan to, yeah. that to, I don't know of anything new to add that we haven't spoken of. Um, if there is something and I'm not thinking of it now, I, that's where, that's where my brain's at. But I think talking about climate adaption plan and, and you know all the other things you guys went through, um, I think that's a pretty good list right there. Um, I guess probably the only other thing that I will, actually I do have something else <laughs> that I'm working on. I have been working on since I was elected and I'm still working on. And that is um, a 
I think it's changed in two years. Technology is changing. So it's kind of good. Sometimes waiting might end up being a benefit, but that would be um, getting city hall and hopefully our, our sewer treatment plant off the grid with a solar project with battery backup, which I know there's a grant for some stuff, but um, I'm re-engaging the people that I've been talking to about that to try and bring that forward. It was a, a promise to Skyler when he so graciously gave up all that money for uh, to help rebuild homes from the fire. And uh, now I think we're learning that things have changed a lot and some of that funding mechanisms won't hurt the city. Um, so that to me is something I'm definitely looking at. Um, so that we how, to, how to start a microgrid project too. Um, we, will, we will add that to, um, to the, the items that we had on the previous work plan. Um, but also the reality is that two staff members. I, I, be that's why I said staff and money because they're the same and they're, but the two parts of the same thing. Yeah, so we have, we have all sorts of issues here to figure out. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I, and I agree. I think there's an, the stuff that you've got in your work plan right now is more than sufficient to take you guys through another year. All right. Uh, so I, I don't, I'm not really looking, I don't have anything in you know, a Mikey's micro grid thing, but other than that, I don't have anything that I would add to this thing right now that says, that we, you know, if we can get through this, I, I think we'll all be happy as heck. Uh, so just as you're thinking your side, Yolanda, that, I don't have anything more that I would want to add. No, you. and I'm thinking for you, Dark Skies is very close to your heart. Yeah. So. Um, well, I'm I, saying, I mean, if, if we can go through and figure out how, how to follow up on the stuff we've already got in front of us, uh, that may be the best thing we can do for the city in the next couple of years. So mm -hmm. that's just, and, and let me ask one other question. You know, this environmental commission, what do you guys think of that? Is that going to help you? I mean, we can, we are open to start talking about it, but uh, again, it's selecting the members and right. finding the process. Um, but how, I mean, the question I have is, look, I don't want to put any more stuff on your plate than you already have, right? And I don't want to make people's life more difficult. That's easy for us to do. But this is the second or third or fourth time somebody has come to me and said, you know, with an environmental commission, we can help the staff out. And I'm just wondering if, if that's your perspective of what will happen if we move forward with that. Or do you know, or should we do more research before we- even I think I'll that do more research before I can answer that question. Okay. gotcha. Uh, knowing that we have, we have the budget in front of us and also the items postponed on the work plan and the continued efforts. I think one of the biggest things that we wanna bring to you possibly very close to next month is the ASB 1383, which is right, I saw that. Yeah. That is very intense. It's a big one. Yeah, I saw that. And it's in in and that is a mandate from the state. Okay. And we have deadlines on that. Uh, it needs to go to council. We are preparing to go by possibly by the end of May, beginning of June. So we want to get your input on that. That is for me in the top of my priorities to get us to compliance. And then there's gonna be a lot of outreach, not only through commercial, but also residential on how the, on how the residents are gonna be able to um, recycle organics and right. plant a coordination. Well, so um, I'm, the, I'm, I'm observing everything that you're telling me. Yeah, well, I'm, I am too. I'm trying to get, yeah, you're, this is new to me also, Yolanda. So I'm just trying yeah. to, I want to be very transparent and very honest with you. No, and I appreciate it. And you I know, want to be the same. Heart, yeah. You know that in my heart is my fire rebuild still. Right. I understand. So, that is well, like, I'm trying to protect my fire rebuild time because that is also. No, I agree. And I, that, that's a major. Pro and I, and I'm trying to look, this is new to me also. So I'm trying to be as smart as I can in terms of identifying things that I think are important, but not sort of screwing up the whole effort you guys have put in and got to this far. So but if, if it's okay with you, I may go out and talk to some of the people that are pushing this environmental commission and sort of get a better definition of how they think it would work and how it might help you guys. And if I get that, I may come back to you, Yolanda, and sort of say, here's what it looks like. And if you could just give me an opinion that says, yeah, that's something that would help us or something. The selection of the members and right. Uh, how often we will meet, what items are going to be bringing to them, and is this creating an extra layer? Or is this well, I'm, 
if it, if it doesn't find, if it's not a commission that's going to help you, right? If it's not a commission that's going to help you get something done, we don't need the commission. At least that's one man's opinion. So we'll see we what happens. Investigation, and then we will discuss. I, yeah. Okay. I, I'll share some thoughts. I, I, it's very high on my list, but we have to have the bandwidth. Yeah. So the advantage of the right commission is, like I said, over the last two years of trying to get, because I, I, one of my plans is to get us off the grid, because <laughs> a city, neighborhoods, everything. I, I think, I think overhead transmission lines are 1880s technology. I'm not really into it. Um, I think it could be very helpful in identifying the direction the city should go, but we have to have the bandwidth. Um, and one example would be in the last two years, this whole getting city hall off the grid has changed. And uh, to have the right people on there that, that have the time to focus on that and, and uh, help the city with the health city council with that would be a benefit. Um, I can see in my mind, most likely, and it was, I think it was brought up by Keon or Joel before, as I remember that maybe when we started, we started on a quarterly basis so that, you know, they take some time to spend time and really think about the future of Malibu environmentally and what projects make sense, understand the mandated projects, but that also still takes some time, even if they only meet quarterly. So I think there's ways that we can get ourselves there. Um, what I can't answer is if we're there now, I mean, it's, it's, it literally sits on my phone. I look at it every single day as something I want to get accomplished. Um, so, um, but anyhow, that, that's what I think there. I, I do think it, it could be very important. Like our public safety commission kind of thing. Focus on where we should be going on, on public safety. Um, environmental commission be focused on where we need to go environmentally. And we know- Yeah, but I mean, like, and, and if, if it worked like the, the public safety commission has been an organiza organization as I've watched it, that has actually helped get stuff done, yeah. right? I mean, they 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 take actions. They they go out of their way to uh, either identify stuff, and then after they identify it, help push it in. So if, if the environmental commission could do the same type thing, it would be a benefit to help the staff out. Uh, so that's I'm just that's all I I don't want to put more speed bumps right. in the way of people getting stuff done. And that's, I think for commissions, it's like anything; it's a learning process. Um, right. When I reappointed Chris, my First thing I said was leadership, figure, you know, lead this thing, get things done, help figure it out. And he's just, you know, I think he's one of the driving people there of several and it's, it's exciting, but that doesn't happen overnight and it didn't with that commission either. So, um, so on my list would you had to get more clarity on potential budget estimates and, and staff estimates, I guess they're related. Um, develop a plan for outreach, um, which Steve brought up, I think is a fantastic one. We need feel good stories. And there's a, you guys are doing amazing things as Steve pointed out. And I think we should look to make that part of our, uh, our messaging. Yeah. Uh, I, I am going to go back to Keon's uh, request. If we can do more outreach for uh, rodenticide and poison. So yes. maybe we can, we can start doing that. I think that's something that we can do that right now. Um, you know what our neighborhood did is made signs that we put up all over the neighborhood. And I don't know if the artwork came from Keon or where, but some of the members here of the, of our kind of core group in the community put up uh, rodenticide signs. Cause one of the problem areas has been my neighborhood. We have, you know, the pest control companies are lying and there's been some real issues here and it's really, really upsetting to everybody. So it's, it's a, it's a really great point. And it's something that we can start right now. So yeah, it's, it's, it's in front of the Coastal Commission, right, Mikey? Yeah, it is. And, you know. He says with a sigh. Yeah, he says with a sigh. Um, it's, it's, it's complicated, but right now, uh, um, as Keon and Joel know, we're trying to figure it out with them, the language. Um, and I just appreciate Joel and Keon so much on this. We would be nowhere without them. And uh, I don't, you know, it goes back and it's dealing with the, man, it's dealing with the states always a lot. And, and go back to, I mean, it was, you know, I, I don't know who I was talking to about this about, uh, but you know, these outside companies, all right. I mean, even if we pass a ban, how are we going to pre present, prevent these outside company, 
I mean, it's, you almost have to go back and have a business license so you can know who's coming in here. And if they screw it up, you can go in. So there's a steps, a couple steps I think you're going to have to do to really make it effective. Uh, and we just got to think through those as, after we get it through the Coastal Commission. So, yeah, it's like stopping speeders on PCH. It's, yeah. It doesn't happen all at once. That's for sure. Um, and those those pest control companies are brutal, um, they, in my opinion. You know, the only other thing I would maybe we do this when we talk to, to uh, the city communications people is getting the schools involved. I mean, you know, this project going on at Zuma Beach, I would think that would be something the school, the kids would love to understand and get to watch and watch it progress. I mean, because that, that to me is, you know, they're the folks that are, after we're gone, all right, they're the folks that are going to be carrying this stuff forward and making it work. And the more you can get them engaged in the beginning, I think the better off they'll be in the long run once they see how this stuff gets really put together. So the more of that we can do inside the schools, maybe we, when we talk to the guy about outreach and communication, Mike, you just, if I forget that, if you could just make sure we at least bring that up and get somebody to play with that one too. And we, can start, uh, we also can start uh, reaching out to the different schools, created a uh, presentation and then yeah. uh, that's how we uh, create interest on, on the community. Yeah. I think the kids would love, I would have loved to know the stuff when I was growing up. I mean, this is, this is good stuff. Instead, we got to eat uh, TV dinners or what do they call those things? Back then? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, and also, we shouldn't actually forget Pepperdine. They can be actually a great ally yes. in getting the word out and uh, with not only through their journalism and news department, but just their student body. Well, you know, I did the Pepperdine Earth Day there a number of years in a row. And it was amazing when you went up and talked to those the students about dark skies. They knew more about it than we did. I mean, they understood the, the impact, why it was important, why, why it was good for the health of the community, why it was good for the health of the, of the environment. So you, there's some courses going on up there that really will help us in the long run if we can engage them, because I think you're right. They're smart uh, and they, they want to be active, so. Um, I wanted to say that we, we have good contacts at both Pepperdine and SMMUSD that we can definitely tap cool. in to see their interest. Cool. We need all the help we can get, so let's go get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, I'm sorry, I, I'll, I'll be quiet for the rest of the meeting, that's it enough. <laughs> I think right now, I mean, in my opinion, we're, you know, we're just trying to be, as, be prepared as possible to support you, yeah, and your I, whole department in this in this budgeting cycle and so monthly meetings will help that uh this was just an introduction and and i know it was a little bit long but i really wanted you guys to know everything that we're working on um you. giving you um quarterly updates on things so you also when you're speaking to the community because a lot of um community members go to you so you having the tools is also important for me and Steve and I are both on the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Committee and on uh, Clean Power Alliance. So, right. you know what, Steve, maybe we should, um, as we go forward, cover each other, but maybe you should take, do you want to take the lead on the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Committee or something like that and each take lead on one? Uh, yeah, it's up to you. I, look, I mean, you know, I... I've, I've got to participate in some of these things just so I can get smarter about them. I, I mean, there's a lot of... Clean Power Alliance, Christine was was excellent. She gave me some background on that with the last report. Yeah. And I've got at least an idea of what they're doing. That, that, that was helpful. But some of these other committees, I'd love to, Mikey, but let me just maybe participate in a couple of meetings to get a sense of who's doing what yeah. so I know what the heck I'm getting involved with. But if we can split it up and that makes our life easier, I got no problem with that. Well, in the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Committee, it's very detailed and they are doing way more than I had any clue about. I didn't know, like, like I said, the 91 acres at carbon Canyon, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> no idea. They were looking to purchase that or some of their just projects everywhere. So if you let me know when the next meeting is I'll join it. Just, you know, I'll, I'll more than happy to participate and learn as much as I can. Okay. That's great. That's pretty much, what I have, I'm super appreciative. Um, I think this is great. I really appreciate all the speakers. We have a lot to do and um, you guys are just fantastic again. This, really. this was this was an excellent meeting. I mean, this is 
one of the more informative things I've been involved with is I've been on the city council. So you guys did, this was a great job. Thank you very, very much. We're appreciative and we are honored to work for the city. So we look forward and we're exciting, exciting uh, just to be with you guys, get your feedback and your direction. So thank cool. you. Thank you thank all you. very much. Mike, up to you. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Okay, uh, roll call on that, please. <laughs> Mayor Pearson. Mm, I don't know. I'm having a good time. I'm not sure. I want... Okay. Yes. Council Member Yearing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you again. You are adjourned Thanks. at 11:35 a.m. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Thank you so much, everybody.